two years, Arizona, Texas, Florida, and Idaho have seen the most population growth according to the U.S. Census. Georgetown, Texas had the largest growth by percentage. That's just north of Austin, jumping 10% between the summer of 2020 and 2021. Now, if we look at the highest numeric gain instead of percent increase, San Antonio, Texas, Phoenix, Arizona, Fort Worth, Texas, you guys all saw the most people move from their cities from 2020 to 2021. So what do all these cities have in common? Well, they're all facing serious drought, which isn't surprising, right? More people, more water usage in many different ways. Meanwhile, places like Florida, which are getting hit with more intense hurricanes, are seeing massive population growth. So is it possible we're moving to places that are going to be hard to, uh, you know, have a, have a habitat yeah. Inhab yeah, in the future? Here to answer that question, we got Dr. Parak on a, the CEO of Climate Alpha to kind of break this down. Yeah. We really appreciate your time with us. And yes, we have seen a huge change Massive. in the way in where people are moving. Why, I guess... Yeah, could we start off with why do you think people are moving to some of these areas that are actually in more drought-stricken um, spots? It's a great question and so nice to be with you. Um, well, first of all, in a way, what you're saying is that we haven't seen a lot of change. What we've seen is an acceleration. If you go back 100 years, the percentage of the American population that has grown in the South and the West at the expense of the North and the East has actually widened. So for about 100 years, Americans have been moving to places that now we're realizing happen to be getting either uh, stricken by drought or floods or rising sea levels and increasing intensity of storms. But as you pointed out, we are still moving there. So part of what we do is to think about what are the places where people should be living based upon their resilience? And what are the incentives that we can create to encourage people to relocate to more stable areas? So how do you determine where there's really desirable area? Because I feel like, okay, if a lot of people are leaving the Northeast to go to Florida, you're like instantaneously, okay, Florida, water rise, hurricanes, that whole thing. But I'll tell you what, the whole East Coast, the water is rising on. So it feels like, you know, and then you move inland, you worry about fires. Anyway, I can't figure out where the best place is because wherever you move, there's something it feels like. That is very true. However, lucky for us, America is a very, very large country. And one of the things that's interesting is when we have these conversations about climate risk, our mind veers towards, you know, Miami or the Carolina coast and so forth. And yes, some people, millions of people will have to re relocate for a variety of reasons. It could be rising sea levels, it could be drought, it could be floods, it could be fires. But there are certainly places for them to go and often not that far away. The truth is that most people people don't move very far. My parents happen to have just retired from New York to California. It's not all that common to make such a long distance move. And for every place that's at risk, you can actually map out what is the closest place to there, that the place that you're leaving, that is resilient, that has you know stable groundwater supply, low flood risk, is less susceptible to heat waves and a variety of other factors. We also bring in the socioeconomic factors. You mentioned earlier that you can look at things like fiscal spending and the quality of the parks and low crime and education level, quality of the healthcare. We try to put all of those data sets together, like the socioeconomic data sets, the environmental data sets, and obviously property prices into one algorithm, actually, to kind of figure out which places ought to be the places that people should want to live in. Do you think, we just did a story a couple weeks ago about, I believe it was St. George, Utah, wanting to tap in an extra pipeline into the Colorado River because they have an influx of so many people. Do you think there's ever gonna be a time where you know, certain municipalities can be like, hey, no, we can't hold any more people because we have not enough water as it is? Oh, that's exactly happening. In fact, in various parts of the Southwest, we've seen this in, uh, in California, we'll probably see it in Arizona as well. Down at the city council level, courts and other bodies are blocking certain real estate developments saying, until you can demonstrate that you have sufficient water to provide for these inhabitants, these residents to whom you're selling these homes, we cannot issue those permits. So permitting is being constrained already on the, as a result of scarce, precious resources like water. That said, what we're also looking at is infrastructure spending. Look at the IRA legislation and the promises for more water desalination plants. Uh, California has just announced plans for, for a significant one in the Central Valley. And so where you have that adaptation investment 
could be in Phoenix, Arizona, could be elsewhere, you're going to see people be able to stay, whereas a climate model alone might say, uh-oh, we can't live there anymore. Well, the truth is that we are very adaptable and we have technology, we have financial resources, we can continue to make places livable that seem unlivable. The question though is, Nature could always overwhelm those places. Maybe our technologies won't work. Maybe the grid is going to fry. You know, lots of different things could happen. So we have to take all of these different factors into account. Our view is that people are going to generally shift towards more stable, livable areas because it also has to do with asset prices, with property values. You don't want to buy a home and be handing down that asset to future generations if you don't feel that's going to be appreciating over mm -hmm, time. Right. Yeah. All right. So now everyone get ready to move. Where are we moving to then? <laughs> yeah, Give us, you know, maybe your top three places. Oh, I knew you were going to ask that. And I can't <laughs> say I have a definitive answer because what we do is we run scenarios, right? So, you know, there's a different climate forecast or scenario for different places in the country uh -huh. at different time scales, right? And a different appetite or tolerance to spend the money to live in those places. And some places that are really climate resilient, like, you know, the Great Lakes region and parts of the Northeast and, and so forth, they don't necessarily have a ton of economic activity right now to support a growing population. So you kind of have a chicken and egg situation. Some of the more resilient places from a climate standpoint right. aren't the most desirable from an economic standpoint. And so you kind of have to see all of that happening in, in tandem. But of course, you know, we, we run our kind of future models. We kind of back test from the future to see what places will do well. And I just want to be clear, it isn't just one place. It's not just a matter of latitude and resources. Um, it really is about population density and tax rates and quality of infrastructure and schools yeah. and uh, crime and hospital systems. It isn't just climate. You know, as we talked about at the beginning, people have been moving in what you what we might call the wrong direction for a long time because actually tax policy, right, and sunny weather and, you know, good schools, that does motivate us a lot. And climate is now going to be an added factor, sure. but not the only factor. All right, so you let us know once everything starts. <laughs> once kinda, just give okay, us, give us a heads the first up. To know. Yeah, give us a heads up <laughs> when you start to see things, you know, moving in that direction. Uh, Dr. Prakana, uh, thank you so much, thank CEO you. of Climate Alpha. Really interesting stuff that people are doing this because I don't know if everyone even thinks about that far in advance yet right but you I need mean, to start doing